Welcome to another edition of Minor Obsession. Scott Lieberman with Sean Noon as always, and it's game time preview. We're playing FAU. It's homecoming. It's Lane Kiffin. We ruined their season last year. Can we mess it up to start this year? Sean? I think they're going to be out for revenge. Yeah. Uh, I'm scared, but I'm also excited. It's a great, it's homecoming. It's the Oktoberfest alumni tailgate, which is always a good time with a ton of beer out there. Belt and College Day, too. Just Belt College plug. Day, too. <laughs> Shout out Belt College, who's been very good to us. Um, I don't know. I what I what I hope is a guaranteed is that this is our most exciting homecoming environment we've seen yet. I mean, I'll be honest. Some of our homecoming games in the past, uh, I don't know. I don't know if we knew how to do homecoming. We've we've tried. We've put parades in place and stuff like that. But we've always been a basketball homecoming. We're trying to make this thing a thing type school until the past seven years and. And over those years, there's been some really exciting ones where people are pumped up because it's our first season or our first season at FBS. But in general, I'd say support has been lackluster and excitement has been lackluster. But if there's ever a time to be excited, we've got a perfect game matchup. We've got a first-year head coach who's full of energy. We've got a uh, staff who's full of energy. And we've got a team who's playing with a ton of energy. So if our stadium's not full, I don't know what's going to get our stadium full. Yeah, and I think the homecoming's really matured with different award ceremonies and 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 then Coach Healy did that really cool thing with the Alumni Association uptown. So I mean I think I think they're really starting to to hone in on what homecoming should be and I'm excited about the game. I think one interesting part of it and we'll you know, we like to get into the lines because I think Vegas tells a good story back to Clemson, right? Said forty two point spread, how much did we lose by? Forty two. Mm. Over under was 61. What was the total? 62. So I think Vegas normally tells a good story most of the time. It's so weird. I don't even understand how they get it so right. They're so right. So for this game, the over under is 65 and a half, and the spread is minus one. For, I believe, I believe Charlotte's the favored by one, that home field advantage. Uh, Uh, No. No, No, yeah, no, they are. Charlotte, the, the line opened at FAU minus one. And the current line, Charlotte minus one. So either way, again, for those that aren't familiar with that, it's a one point. FAU is going to win by one point. Now it's Charlotte's going to win by one point. Moral of the story is it's a really close game. All the other games we've played so far have been double-digit spreads in one, one direction or the other. And that's why you've seen pretty much blowouts in one direction or the other. App was pretty close, but – the some of the special teams plays, especially the end with the onside kick, made the score look a little bit uh, further away than it really was. But if Vegas tells you anything, this is our first real big test, right? We played Gardner Webb, which was kind of a, a pushover game. We played UMass, same thing. App, we definitely exceeded expectations, and Clemson, it was what we thought it was. Yep. This is the first evenly matched game. Could be our first close game with Coach Healy. We had a lot of close games last year where, you know, we talked about it, some mismanagement by Brad that, that might have led to his exit. We'll see how Coach Healy does in a, a close game potentially with timeouts, play calls, challenges, all that fun stuff. Yeah, I agree. Um, with, you know, building on your interpretation there of the line, that means Vegas is basically saying on a neutral field – we would be two point underdogs. So FAU is slightly better, but we get a one point advantage because of the home field advantage. So we better make that actually play into the the factor. We better be loud. We better be there. We better be excited. We've seen some statistical drop offs after playing the number one team in the country, which is to be expected. We went across a NFL level defense and an NFL level offense, and uh, it showed. And so. Um, I'm impressed that we've still managed, even after that game and only scoring uh, 10, we're still first in Conference USA in scoring average, which is awesome to me. We had we had a game against the number one team in the country where we did almost no scoring, 
and our first couple games of the season were big enough to be able to make our average 38 points, still first in Conference USA, <laughs> 29th in FBS ranking, <laughs> and our rushing offense is still first in USA too because Benny LeMay, I shot Finger, Aaron McAllister doing their thing. Even down at Clemson, we were breaking off some, some runs. Uh, and credit to the, the offensive line too, Cam Clark and the boys uh, – we're opening holes as well. I, th- I think Cameron Clark got a, a player of the week award this past week for his, his play at, at Clemson, or at least included on one of the teams, maybe the offensive team. Um, and that was with three backup offensive linemen walk ons Right, yeah. And so, so we should have, I believe, two of them back this week, if not all three. Uh, so that should definitely help us out, give, give the quarterback a little bit more protection. And speaking of the quarterback situation – Somewhat breaking news. I'm not sure if it's been announced all over. I asked the question at the the Healy Uptown happy hour thing, and he answered it pretty directly. We are no longer a two-quarterback system, and Reynolds is now officially the starter, and all he can do now is lose the job. But he is the starter. He talked to, to Reynolds and Keene about that, and he is the starter. And the, the one person that scored a touchdown at Clemson, so – Pretty yeah. excited about that. It's got to give him a little bit. Uh, hopefully he still plays with a chip on his shoulder and everything, but got to give him a little bit of you know, room to, to make mistakes and not, not worry about being on too short of a leash. Yeah, and it's interesting that you got that answer, and I fully support that answer. On our depth chart for this week's game, still listed as a or for Chris Reynolds or Brett Keen, uh, but you know, I think we both have kind of been on the train after the first game that – Chris Reynolds is going to get the majority of the snaps. Hopefully he this this game is a game where he just takes all the snaps. Last week we saw Keen a little bit against Clemson. Obviously that's not a game we ever had in hand. So who really cares who was on the field for, for QB at the, that point? We weren't going to take that game home. Um, Part of that but, could also be gamesmanship too. It could, because yeah. That's, that's very Then you Bill never know Belichick. who to prepare for. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I did see rumors, it's not listed as part of the, the depth chart here as official, but I did see rumors that uh, Jeff Gimmel should be able to play this week, which would be awesome um, for our defense, having a captain back out there um, running with us. Um, still sad that uh, we're missing Tyreek Harris on the, the front line and Ben DeLuca out for the season. But, um, you know, our defense played well against Clemson even, I thought. Uh, outmatched to bigger men. Uh, we saw Highsmith do his thing. And um, hopefully we'll we'll see a real good defensive show in here this week with a really important Conference USA opening game. And Coach also said at that that Gimmel would probably be playing. Yeah. So. Well, that's great. I mean, yep. we need him out there. Uh, no disrespect to everybody who was filling in for him, but uh, it's just uh, he, he's been around for a while, and he's been a great impactor for a while, and so it's great to have him out there and, and have him with his uh, senior leadership out there. For sure. So we, we talked a little bit about the spread. Let's talk about our scores and then, you know, who our impact players are going to be. Sean, you got a prediction for this week? Score-wise? Score-wise, spread-wise. I mean, pretty much they, they fall together, right? Like whatever yeah. you, you pick for the winner, unless you think we're only going to win by one. or uh, I, I, don't <laughs> think, I don't think we're only going to win by one. Uh, pretty improbable, but I have seen it happen. I mean, like we said, Vegas is somehow weirdly on point with stuff like that where you think one's a weird spread and then magically the game ends up being a one-point differential. Um, I think it's going to be a score. You know, FAU's averaging 30 points a game. We're averaging 38 points with a game against the number one team in the country holding us down. Uh, So I'd see us, I'd look to see us get back into the 40-point range and uh, maybe give up in the the 30-ish point range. I mean, the the areas of opportunity we've talked about from previous games are is special teams going to give them a short field or potentially give up a touchdown and uh are are is our defense going to be able to hold down those few big plays that end up being 60 yard touchdowns um and get more into the bend don't break so i'm going with a score of um let's see here 42 to 36 
Wow, big score. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm going to go opposite of you. I'm taking the hot take. I think we do go 3-0 and at home and, and defend Jerry Richards in the stadium. And I think we we beat FAU pretty handily, but I don't think it's a scoring battle. <laughs> I'm going to go with Charlotte 31, FAU 17. Mm. So you're you're saying we have that game pretty in hand by a touchdown or two the whole game. I think we we uh it might be tight in the first half, but based on lack of scoring altogether, I think it's more of a defensive battle. I feel like when we think these games are going to be shootouts is when the defense gets annoyed and that's when they step up and the offense gets a little too cocky on both sides. And I just I think we score a little bit. I, d- I don't know if it's defensive touchdowns maybe. I think the running game continues to, to power on. I think Reynolds shows a little bit more confidence, especially now officially being named the starter, maybe not on the depth chart you're looking at, but at least from, from coach, which is the most important person to hear it from. And I, I think we have a, a nice homecoming win. I think we come out with a lot of energy, but I think it slows down quickly. And 31-17, Charlotte uh, defends home and, and goes to the next one. Okay, that's interesting. I mean, FAU has been tested already this season. They're 2-2 two and two right now, but their losses are to number 5 Ohio State and number 18 Central Florida. Um, both those games, they didn't score a ton, 14 points and 21 points respectively. Um, so that's that might have their numbers deflated a little there, but uh, that's okay. I'm on the scoring side. You're on the defense side. We'll see how it turns out next week. So far, one of us has been pretty right. Every week. Yeah, that's me. Five and one. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you say I was four and two? <laughs> yeah. I mean, both of us, just to be clear, both of us are picking a spread cover here, right? And you're picking a, a under on the over-under, and I'm picking a over here? It's the yeah, over-under 65. And, and personally, uh, if I was to bet on this, I would bet the money line over the spread cover just in oh, case sure. freaky mm-hmm. things happen. Um, mm-hmm. I think we're definitely going to win. Yep. I and think that would only be like an extra minus five of juice or something like that. And another interesting wrinkle to throw in here, just because I like to throw these things in. Currently right now, pretty even 50-50 in terms of uh, betting tickets coming in. So uh, that's that shows you why it's so closely contested here. People aren't quite sure which side of the line to be on. Um, but we'll yeah. see. Well, and with the defense, and this goes into why I think this is an interesting matchup, uh, Glenn Spencer, their defensive coordinator, was our defensive coordinator last year when we had a pretty darn good defense. So I feel like he wants to prove something to to us and Coach Healy and, and have that defense working. He probably knows a lot of our offensive players pretty well. But I think our defense also wants to show him we're still good. And that's why I think we're going to see uh, some more defense than currently expected. That's fair. Can't argue there. I would love to see some good defense. I'm a big defensive guy myself. Um, so, I mean, who's your who's your players? Who you got that you yeah. think are going to be big impact players? I mean, I I think if Gimmel plays, I think I think that's a nice one. Should I do what you did last week? Oh, big call there. Yeah. Big, yeah, yeah. big call. Picking no, I'm gonna, the, the no, defensive no, no. captain. Yeah, I, I'm going to let you pick that because I know that's where you're going to go. And I, I think he will have a big impact. But honestly, and again, you could make fun of me all you want. It's Alex Highsmith, dude. He's he's killing it. He's, he's the man. He's going to get drafted. And he's going to get another sack or two and continue his, his reign. He looked really good against Clemson, the number one team in the country. Why can't he look good against FAU? Because he will. He's gonna yeah. he's gonna do really good out there, and it's gonna be great. Yeah, I mean, it, it, we're four games into the season, and he's already tied Larry Ogunjobi's single season sack record of five. Uh, so, as and, well as tackles for loss, I believe, with which was seventeen. Um, so that's impressive to start with, and then I saw earlier this week uh, the offensive tackle for. Clemson said that was by far the best pass rush, rusher he ever went against. So that's high praise coming from somebody who's playing against uh, Power 5 conference teams, uh, Top 25 conference teams. And that uh, was post-game. Whole, when that was post-game. That's not how, how it is where, you know, Dabo, Dabo, 
starts hyping us up before the game and then, you know, never talks about us again. This was post game game's over. You don't need to make people feel good anymore. And he, he still mentioned that. So yeah, that's, that's a really good accomplishment. I'm excited to, to see him continue to truck on and, and look great. So that's your guy. That's Alex Highsmith on defense. You got anybody on offense? Uh, you know what? I, I kind of feeling, I feel like we, we, we kind of miss him out and we don't give him the love he des- deserves. McAllister. I think we, we talk about Aishan and we talk about Benny and we kind of forget the middle man. It's like the middle child. And he also averaged four and a half yards per carry against Clemson last week and looked really good with the rock. Uh, I, I see him having a nice game, spelling a little bit and really doing his thing. Not just that, but another fun fact, since I'm throwing them out there while you're picking your people, uh, last week he uh, passed the 1,000-yard career mark, so he's now our fifth uh, 49er to rush for over 1,000 yards in their career. Wow. Impressive. And he's a redshirt junior, so he's got a little time, too, to, to increase that. What about you? What's What's your picks? So... I am going to – I'll do my defensive one first. You took Alex Highsmith. I wasn't going to take him this week since I had him last week, and he got a sack for me. Um, I'm going with Nafis Lyon, cornerback, baby. I think he's uh, done had some really good coverage so far this season. I'm looking for him to get an interception, and, you know, he's our punt return man. I'm looking for him to return a punt to the house. Looking for him to take it all the way. Wow punt return for a touchdown yeah hot take calling it and, out now. and that's where the 42 is coming from too right like hot freaking take okay sean if i will happens, get back on this on sunday and be like whoa look at it, you right no Thomas yeah. if it happened for sure so and if then, it doesn't happen we'll never speak of it again <laughs> <laughs> uh and then on the uh offensive side of things um man that's tough. I'm going to go with Cam Dollar. I think he's going to have a good good game this season. Uh, or not this season, the, the good game this week. And uh, look for him to put up some, some big numbers. I'm saying uh, two TDs, five catches, oh. 75 yards receiving. Wow, I didn't get so detailed with with McAllister. Let me go back. <laughs> I'm I'm calling for 80 yards rushing, 20 yards receiving, and a TD. 100 okay. yard, 100 plus yards of all-purpose yards. Let's go. Okay, that's fair. Hold us to it. Yeah. If if uh, we're picking, if all these things occur, I mean, I think we deserve a daytime Emmy or something. Yeah, and and I the other thing I would say, which I hope not, but I'm I'm calling this too. Wouldn't be surprised if I see a roughing the kicker when Cruz is out there at one at some point. FAU is probably just still to get mad. back to him. That's yeah. fair. <laughs> <laughs> That's really fair. I wouldn't put past Lane Kiffin either. Yeah, <laughs> but I hope not. I hope he just hits another bomb in this game. Maybe he'll make a 50 plus yard field goal at some point. I hope it's not close enough for that to matter. I hope it's not close enough that they do just throw him out there for a 60-yard field goal and he drills it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for Club Lit to open for business again this week. So, Well, another thing Coach Healy said is they actually have a new sign for Club Lit. Oh, just, yeah, man. Get on Twitter. It. I Yo, saw it. Oh, Neons I, I, and all. Yeah, it's supposed to be pretty cool. And uh, Rodney Graves, shout out to him, he actually asked how he can get a ticket to come into Club Lit. And uh, – to, to be determined, but still uh, asking questions about that. So maybe one day, if anyone's going to get in there, I'm guessing it's going to be him. <laughs> so I think we have the perfect two bouncers in Alex Atkins and Marcus West uh, for Club Lit. So if, they could, if the fans could just line up outside waiting to get in and, and you know, Marcus and Alex could stand out there and, and uh, let two people in at a time, that would, I feel like that would go over <laughs> pretty well. One other interesting thing that came out from that that was asked uh, – Coach was talking about Clemson fans rushing the field, and apparently they do that every game. Mm -hmm. He also mentioned that that might be an NCAA violation, and they might get fined every time and pay the fine, but he's looking into getting our fans on the field like that as well, make make it a little bit easier for them so they don't have to do the horseshoe to slap everyone's hands. So that's another feature that 
potentially could change in the future depending on what that fine or if there is a way to not get fined type thing. I don't think we're going to pay the fine, but so interesting there, concept as well. There's just like meeting at the paw, meeting of the paw or something. So ours would be meeting at the pick. Ooh, okay. I, I kind of like uh, something with gold. I don't know oh. if it's digging for gold or something like that. Maybe. <laughs> we can we can throw out our marketing ideas to them later. We'll think about it later. But I, anyway, moral of the story is 49ers win. Sean's got a lot of scoring. I got less scoring, more defense. We expect a Niner win. We expect a really fun homecoming. We expect – uh, undefeated at home season thus far, and a good crowd, and a good crowd. The crowd. Crowd better show up. I think they will. I think this is probably going to be a better turnout than any of the games thus far, especially with what we've accomplished with the Clemson game and App and and the home games that have that have come out already. And I believe there's some discounted tickets out there too uh, with some codes. There so are. Get on Actually, that as well. They're twelve dollars, I believe. They are twelve dollars. Might as well hop on that if you don't already have a ticket to the game. How can you beat going to a FBS level um, football game for twelve dollars? Homecoming kickoff of Conference USA play. Lane Kiffin, a, a, a built-in villain. It should be really fun. Welcome Glenn Spencer back. Hopefully with thirty points on his defense. So lots of good stuff. Sean, anything additional you want to add? Anything else people should look out for? No, look out for us. We're on social media. Feel free to engage Minor Obsession for all of them. Minor, minor, minor underscore Obsession for Twitter and Instagram. Uh, and always love getting emails from fans or uh, with questions or comments. So Minor Obsession 49 at gmail.com. And uh, if you see us at a game, feel free to stop by and say hi. We'll be out looking for somebody wearing some cool gear this week to give away some more free stuff thanks to uh, – the 49ers licensing department. Uh, so it's going to be a good time. I'm excited. Yeah. We'll be in our minor obsession hats. We'll be at the alumni tailgate. So look for us. Hopefully you're enjoying this on your way to the, to work today, or you're joining on your way to the game. Moral of the story is 49ers win lane. Kiffin loses one and zero in conference play back to a winning record of three and two. And Let's go. the season keeps going. We're going bowling, baby. Coach Healy's doing great things. I'm pumped up. I'm wearing green. And I'm going Niners. <laughs> Let's go. Have a great day. Enjoy the game. <laughs>